You don't get it, do you? As time passes and YouTube gets older, many different channels come and go. YouTubers who were once the top channels soon become passing memories of a time now long gone. Some names that spring to mind are that of Smosh, Ray William Johnson, Fred, and the Annoying Orange, and so on. And among these names are Dalton and Emmy, the couple who founded and ran the YouTube channel Jaltoid. Their animations exploded into popularity shortly after their debut, and right once it seemed they were at their peak, they slipped into obscurity. This is the story of Jaltoid, a channel that was once a titan in the animation medium on YouTube to now being a distant memory. But before we get to the how, we must first go to the beginning. According to Wikitubia, the most reputable site for YouTube knowledge, obviously, Where's my fucking page? Dalton Joyce had a background with animation, particularly on Newgrounds, starting around 2004 or 2005. Meanwhile, Emmy Cuck had a background in art. They met on a quote-unquote art website as Dalton came across an animation where she voiced a character. He approached her to do a voice in his animation, and the rest is history. As it turns out, Jaltoid didn't start out on YouTube as Jaltoid, but started with their channel named Game Porridge, which is still up. In July 2012, Dalton and Emmy started the channel with content featuring exactly what you would expect for a newbie 2012 gaming channel. The videos are simple gameplay videos by Dalton and Emmy in which they play games and commentate over them, albeit with very dry commentary and poor production value. It's somewhat humbling to know that creators like them started out on YouTube in a similar way with videos struggling to maintain a decent frame rate of the games they play. Really brings me back to a simpler time. This venture didn't last very long as they would go on to start the Jaltoy channel only a few months after Game Porridge was started. Dalton originally used the channel as a personal one, uploading some live action content for a couple months with very little success. However, their first animation was a happy birthday video to their friend Clark, which bizarrely depicts him playing a sax naked on stage? Um... But their abilities wouldn't be tested until their animation titled Dead Oreo, a short video where Dalton accidentally smothers their cat Oreo in trash, which causes him to think he's killed the cat. The duo would go on to post a few more animations of a similar nature, being either original shorts or parodies of popular media. This was pretty standard of the time, especially with Dalton having been a Newgrounds creator beforehand. These videos actually performed quite well, but they would go on to be eclipsed by their future work. On November 16th, 2012, Jaltoid would upload their video Minecraft Problems. While it wasn't too different to their animation parodies on MLP or Pokemon, it's the one transitional point between what they had created before into creating what they would go on to be known for. From this point forward, they would go on to make animations poking fun at the contemporary culture of the time. This included such things as the behavior of Minecraft players and online servers, girl gamers, free-to-play games, social media, and the general experience of being a content creator online. These videos set Jeltwood apart from the other animation channels on YouTube at the time, as they commented on topical subjects in a manner that didn't become dated in a year. A lot of these animations still hold up very well today, especially the PewDiePie commenters one, literally just replace the PewDiePie specific terminology in the video, and replace it with whatever uber popular YouTuber who's cool to hate at the time, and it works just as well. Only after a few months, they were able to reach over 8,000 subscribers and have one of their videos surpass 100,000 views. The content Jaltoy created was simple, but very effective, especially for the YouTube landscape of the time, which was just coming into its own. Animation was once a huge genre on YouTube. Animation videos have wide appeal, and the medium allowed for a greater freedom in what you could put in the video. The popular content of the time involved scripted videos with people appearing on camera and acting out comedic scenes in live action for comedic effect. Jaltoy wasn't too different, focusing on character dialogue and exchanges, but the animated nature allowed them to incorporate comedic segments segments that could only be achieved in the medium. The style of Jaltoid animations was unmistakable, being a blend of both Dalton and Emmy's art styles. They also incorporated a lot of smart techniques in their animations that helped to cut down on the time that it would take to make a video. People apparently critiqued this as being lazy, but I don't understand that. 
It's like what I said in my Yin Yang Yo review. Playing to your own strengths and taking full advantage of your tools is how you create something that both looks polished without spending egregious amounts of time on it. Sure, Joltoid used quite a few motion tweens in their animations, and some segments are just sliding an object across the screen, but it's that stylization that both defined Joltoid and allowed them to create animations on a consistent basis. Yes, there are better animators out there, even on YouTube, but you can't seriously expect every animator to animate everything frame by frame. It's impractical. Joltoid set themselves apart in both their animation and art styles, their sense of humor, direction, and their particular video subjects. While most animators of the time chose to create animated parodies of popular media to poke fun at the bizarre aspects of them, or to just generally riff on it entirely, Joltoid riffed on popular culture of the internet, something that was novel at the time. Sure, other animators would occasionally do so, like Psychic Pebbles' Reply Girls video, but they failed to capture the timelessness and meticulousness of Joltoid. Now, I realize it sounds like I'm kind of gushing over this channel to an extent where it feels kind of undeserved, and I fully understand that. Honestly, it could very well be up to sheer luck that most of the Joltoid videos have stood the test of time, and are both enjoyable and topical to this day. It's not like they're industry veterans or time travelers who knew that their videos would transcend mere pot shots on the internet. Regardless, they at least had a semblance of knowing what they were doing. It's not like they could have been able to be lucky with every animation they created. They were at least somewhat aware that what they were creating would resonate with others. Only after a year of creating content did they reach over 200,000 subscribers, and had multiple videos hit over a million views. And this was back in 2013. Getting a million views back in those days was virtually unheard of. You couldn't just make an hour-long expose on a groomer and rake in the views. This was a serious challenge that only a few select people were able to achieve, much less able to achieve multiple times. By June 2014, just a couple months before their two-year anniversary on YouTube, they had hit 500,000 subscribers. This was a momentous occasion and marked the halfway point to a million subscribers, the logical end goal of YouTube, the defeating the Ender Dragon of this platform. Over the next year, the two would power through creating animations, posting quite a number to their channel during that time. Classics like the E-Fame Survival Guide and The Struggle of Anxiety were created during this time. Joltoid even dabbed in some sort of serialized content, creating a series based on their own lives together, as well as a series called Quest Bits, which was a spin-off of the World of Anime Babes MMORPG from the free-to-play video. There was also their series Pippin Pap, which was a series of shorts featuring a little cat and a bird character, neither of which ever spoke. While it never maintained the same popularity as the mainline Joltoid videos, or even Quest Bits, it was still good to see Joltoid branch out and create different animations. They even made a few speed drawing videos while animations were being animated. Sure, they are some of the least popular content on the channel, and while I'm not a fan of the type of content personally, it's still a nice simple form of content to produce while working on bigger projects. It seemed that Joltoid was beginning to gear up to restructure their channel in a new way to appease the changing YouTube landscape, but it was at this point that things began to change, and a new path began to take over. Hey everybody. Watch out for those blind. If you thought Game Porch would be their last time they would try their hands at Let's Plays, then you were dead wrong. It's no secret that the YouTube algorithm changed sometime around 2012 to favor longer uploads, especially if they were frequent. If you could pump out a 10 minute video each day, that was great, and it's what led to the rise of channels such as Game Grumps, Only Plays, and Scott the Waz. But since animation takes time to create even one minute of animation, this served as a great disadvantage to animators. Often, people portray this change as wholly negative, but it was specifically put into place to benefit the YouTube experience in the broader scope of the platform, and in the long run. It's doubtful you would have found a lot of your favorite YouTubers, especially the newer ones, if it hadn't been for this algorithm change. Hell, my most popular videos are the ones that are the longest in length on my channel, and the new algorithm helps to churn out a lot of low effort spam that came from people like Reply Girls. But the disadvantage placed on animators shouldn't be ignored. It put an entire group of animators in a position where they had to reinvent their content without completely alienating the audience that they had worked so hard to attain. Joltwit Games was created about a year after Game Porridge. 
the channel served as mainly the couple's side hustle as they worked on animations, which made sense since Let's Plays are relatively easy to produce, especially the primitive ones that they made. Even compared to their contemporaries like the Game Grumps or Markiplier, their early Let's Plays featured very little in the way of edits besides simple jump cuts. The most they did at the time was adding a small dabble of text in their Left 4 Dead 2 LP. But these videos were pretty basic. And keep in mind that this was only a year after Game Porridge, so their commentary wasn't the most riveting and still pretty dry. It was a definite step up from Game Porridge, don't get me wrong. It was actually watchable for a start, but I struggled to focus while watching their content. And that's not even getting to the hot mess that their Super Cod Player 1995 videos were. How bad are they? Well, have you ever seen Melvin, Brother of the Joker? Yeah, it's that bad. Hello, hi, I am Melvin, the Brother of the Joker. I'm sure a lot of you haven't heard of me, but uh, I am the brother of, yes, the infamous Joker. You know, why so serious, you know, all that stuff. Get out, get, I'm not even kidding, get out of here. Get out! I need to do the video! Get out of here! Get out of my room! Great, now this isn't a solo video. Welcome to the number two commentator. Shut up, this is my video! What baffles me is that these videos are actually relatively popular for the time, which I just cannot fathom. Did people really think this was the pinnacle of comedy back in 2013? Regardless, I don't think they came into their own until their Splatoon playthrough, where they were able to bounce off each other really, really well and kept the flow of their commentary consistent. This was also around the time that they took their gaming escapades to streaming, as they began to re-upload streams to their Jaltoid channel, sometimes chopped up into episodes or just entire streams. This allowed them to double up on content production as they could stream the games in real time, accept donations, and interact with fans, while also creating content for their channel. Just at the big cost of the re-uploads looking like total ass because they're recording the stream in real time, as well as over Ohio dial-up in 2015. It was also around this time that they uploaded a video to their main channel promoting this channel. If a YouTube channel uploads a video promoting their second channel after it was created, I think it's safe to say they have intentions of jumping ship. Subscribe to the second channel, by the way, we have a new video coming out soon. And to be fair, Joltoy didn't completely abandon their main channel for their second channel for like a year. After their promo video, they uploaded a few more animations based on their LP content, which was a big help in getting people to check out their gaming channel and shot their Who's Your Daddy video to over 100,000 views in at most a month. After three years, the Joltoid Games channel hit over 100,000 subscribers, and by 2016, it was clear the tides were turning. Uploads on the Joltoid channel slowed down considerably, and it's not like they used to shoot them out every month or so beforehand or whatever, but they slowly began to upload basically whatever they felt like at this point, and the quality of the animations began to be of a dubious quality. I don't think following up animations like Cat Food and the Pippin Pap series with videos like Cover Dat Booty and Cat President was the best choice. One of which involves the main character taking a shit and playing with said shit on screen, basically fully animated, and the other is Cat President. No, I'm just kidding. I don't think these videos are necessarily bad, but compared to their previous work, they just aren't as strong. And in the case of the YouTube in 2016 animation, it was outdated in the matter of a year. Like, when's the last time you've seen a prank video? Or even- forget that, even when was the last time you've been recommended a prank video? But after jumping ship to focus on their gaming channel, was the change worth it? For a while, yes, actually. Sometime between 2016 and 2018, they rebranded their gaming channel to just Joltoid Media, as it encapsulated a broader field of content. The channel was no longer just a gaming channel, it could be used to upload all kinds of content. Except animations, of course, until they just said fuck it and uploaded animations there anyways. 2015 and 2016 proved quite beneficial to the channel, but this would soon be eclipsed by their performance in 2017. 2017 was the biggest year in the channel's history up to that point. The Switch had just launched worldwide, helping them out with a new platform full of exclusive games. But they also got really popular thanks to an unprecedented amount of horny content. Their Senran Kagura Shinobi vs series was already pretty popular, but their estimate vs series was considerably bigger. They also created their most popular series at this time with the Snipper Clips LP, and drew some really fucking suggestive thumbnail art, like holy fuck this is a bit much even for me. Oh, and it didn't stop there, a lot of their thumbnails around this time featured a somewhat suggestive tone, turning the rabid cosplaying as Peach into this. Like, is this Geltoid or Radical Soda? <laughs> Come on, it's funny, you just didn't get the reference. Around this time, they also started a podcast with a couple friends called the Lazy Cast Podcast. The podcast was hosted by Dalton, Emmy, 
Doopy Doover, a former YouTube animator and Planet Dolan member who now sells photos of her body online, along with her boyfriend. I actually listened to the podcast quite frequently when it ran. They even put it up on Google Play Music so that a total of three people could listen to it, myself included. Fuck if I remember anything about it, though. The only thing I remember was how Siva Gunner said that the Nut Shack only became a meme on the channel because someone uploaded a rip with the song in it. Also, some of the content on the channel is now lost because the original channel was basically nuked off YouTube entirely, so... Have fun with that. Jeltoid carried their momentum through 2018 and the first half of 2019, amassing an audience for themselves of people who either had no interest previously or had no idea who they were. They even made a series in 2019 where they went back and tore down some of their old animations and gave fans a look at the inner workings of how they were produced, which was very interesting, and I ended up learning a thing or two about Flash. But after this series of videos, their viewer retention took a massive hit. Videos from before stand with over 100,000 views nowadays, while the content produced afterwards saw a drastic decline. Most videos still haven't hit 50,000 views to this day. While exact analytics aren't available to me, based on what I can glean from archives of the channel page, these low numbers weren't present on the channel prior. So, what happened? I have a couple theories as to what may have caused this change in the channel. My first theory is that many of the viewers were experiencing content fatigue. Content fatigue is a term that I just coined right now to describe the feeling of content feeling stale and repetitive over time. When a YouTuber becomes complicit and fail to offer something new, viewers will begin to lose interest in the channel. I experienced this firsthand after a while of watching Jaltoid games. After a while, I just kind of fell out of it and didn't really want to watch that content anymore. And that could be what the channel could be experiencing right now. Another possible theory is that the algorithm began to act up with promoting their content after their animation focus series. They released this series consecutively over 4 or 5 months with no updates on their gaming content. The hiatus on gaming content could have resulted in the algorithm believing they were going to create more animation related content and began recommending their gaming content to the wrong audience. It could possibly be that they aren't pulling in the same views as they used to, causing them to be recommended less and less making them rake in less views as a result and the cycle forms. Or it might even have to do with demonetization, as demonetization of content means it isn't pushed out or promoted basically at all. The third and least plausible theory that I have is that of the gaming community on YouTube just being so competitive now. We are currently in the second renaissance of gaming content on YouTube, and the gaming content has never seen so many creators and competition before. You have veterans like AVGN, Catacarus, Some Call Me Johnny, and all those guys vying for attention alongside new faces like Dream, Scott the Waz, Mac McMuscles, and Video Game Storytime. And that's only the ones I could think of, there are way more out there. Expanding your audience can be tough now when there is no shortage of quality gaming content on YouTube. Whatever could be affecting the Jaltoid Media channel, it's still sad to see a channel many know and love fall so far from grace. They blazed trails on YouTube with their unique animations, and made their mark on the gaming genre with their head-turning thumbnails and LP series. I'm sure most of you expected this to be a harsh commentary video, but that was not what this was meant to be at all. I wanted to really take an objective look and really analyze what's happening to Jaltoid right now. Jaltoid took a gamble in focusing on their gaming content, and while it worked out great for other animators, Jaltoid just didn't see nearly the same amount of success. Even compared to their direct contemporaries such as Hot Diggity Demon and Jello Apocalypse, those channels were able to adapt much better and retain much of the core audience that they had already built up, with similar content that still appeased the new algorithm. Jaltoid uploaded a video in 2017 to their main channel where they drew what they thought their followers' PFPs were based on a tiny preview you see in your notification tabs on Twitter. And the video both did very well and was such a novel concept that, if they continued to create similar content, I think that they would have easily surpassed a million subscribers on their main channel by now and still be relevant. And I think I speak for many, many people when I say that I kind of would have preferred this. As of the creation of this video, they have basically went dormant across all four other channels by now. Their subscriber counts are being chipped away as weeks pass now, possibly due to inactivity or because of the reasons I listed before. They stated that they would take time off of YouTube to improve their mental health and focus on personal projects, and that's good for them. Whatever they produce, if it's something quality, I'll be sure to check it out. With them being animators debuting in 2012 right when the algorithm changed, it's any wonder that they've made it this far. I guess this kind of really proves that even when the odds are stacked against you, you can still overcome adversity. And 
that could still be true of Jaltoid now. So here's hoping they'll rise once more. I've been Rhythm Rev, thank you for watching, and take care of yourself. Thank <laughs> you.